Expecting a baby or you just had a baby? Well, welcome aboard. Today, we're bringing you part two of a two-part series with Healthy Start Coalition. And um, we talked about in the last um, episode for part one about this great organization that helps new mommies or mommies-to-be. So um, let's talk briefly, just in case this is your first time coming in, um, let's go ahead and just talk briefly about what Healthy Start is and what they do with women, okay? So first, I'm here with uh, Miss Bush. Can you talk a little bit about what the program? Absolutely. Um, the Healthy Start Coalition of Okaloosa and Walton mm -hmm. County subcontracts with the COPE Center mm -hmm. for Okaloosa County and we subcontract with the Walton County mm -hmm. um, Health Department for the Walton County um, women and, pre and parents. Um, we work to ensure that healthy mm -hmm. babies are born to healthy mothers. That's the main thrust of our organization. Excellent. And can you introduce yourself, Ms. Gina? Yeah, my name is Gina Baker and I'm the supervisor uh, and care coordinator in Okaloosa County for Healthy Start. Well, excellent. Well, our last, um, on, for part one, for our last show, um, you guys talked all about what you do with the program. Also, you mentioned about um, ways that help women and important facts. And then I was thinking, as I was talking with you guys, I'm like, oh, I know I have questions and I know there are people out there that have questions. So what we did at the end of the show is we actually um, had uh, a way for the our viewers to actually ask questions and they did. And so we brought in, we had several. So hopefully we'll get to go through all of them, but we'll now have a chance on our part two to answer some of those questions. So are you guys ready? <laughs> I'll give it our best. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's start with the first one. Our first question is from Sarah. She says, I am not able to get good night's sleep, and that is tiring me a lot. Uh, any tips? Well, uh, pillows are a big key when you're mm -hmm. pregnant. You can get really uncomfortable as your belly's just getting bigger and bigger mm -hmm. and you start to get a lot of backache. So use all the pillows that you need to use. Mm -hmm. We recommend that you lie down on your left side. It's just a little bit safer, especially as you get to the end of your pregnancy. You mm -hmm. don't want to lie down on your back. There's this vein that goes up the back of your body. and so it's harder to get blood back up to the top of your body. Mm -hmm. So um, on your side, left side, you know, just regular things that you can do to have a good night's sleep, like taking a warm bath, mm -hmm. not watching TV or electronics is what the experts will tell you because <laughs> that really stimulates your brain. Uh, listening to music, any of those things. But really when you're pregnant, it's the pillows. Stacking the pillows all around between your knees can be really helpful too. Oh, excellent. I think that last thing on the whole TV and, you know, electric, that might be a little difficult because <laughs> yeah. everybody, I don't know if everybody's like me, you know, you grab yourself and real quick, let me just check on Facebook real quick, you know, <laughs> even though I just looked two seconds ago. All right, great. Well, I have another question. This one comes from Lisa. She says, too much dizziness of late. Is this a normal part of pregnancy? You know, it really is, and most all women experience this. You're making a lot more blood when you're pregnant, mm -hmm. and at different times of your pregnancy, your blood pressure may, may go up, it, it may also go down, and when it goes down, then you can get that dizziness. Mm -hmm. So it's normal. Now, I say that if it's really excessive, mm -hmm. you always need to talk to your doctor and ask your doctor mm -hmm. about it. But otherwise, if you keep your blood sugar more even, don't mm -hmm. let yourself get um, too hungry, then that can help uh, prevent the dizziness. And also when you stand up, stand up slowly, not too quickly. Okay. Sometimes you just need to sit and kind of put your head in your hands until it passes. But definitely talk to your doctor if you think it's, it seems out of the ordinary. It's just mm -hmm. really excessive. Oh, well, those are really good tips, and also always having snacks and stuff, because yes. that can, because sometimes you forget, like, if you're really busy, or especially working moms out there that work, like, all the way up in their pregnancy, pretty much some work, like, two days before they actually <laughs> deliver and yes. stuff, so they don't think about, oh, man, I, you know, I got to eat, so it's kind of cool that, you know, it's a good idea to have snacks, you know, stuffing mm -hmm. in your purse. Right, they get busy, and, and mm -hmm. like you said, when you're working, you get busy, and you forget to drink, mm -hmm. and you forget mm -hmm. to eat, and when you're pregnant, you can't forget to do those things. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yeah. water. Um, yeah. Very important. <laughs> I keep hearing that all the time. Drink water, drink water, you know, mm -hmm. whether you're pregnant or not, but especially when you're pregnant and it's really important. Yes. So that's good. Um, I have another one from Diane. Heartburn is causing me lots of problems. What can I do to prevent it? Uh, just the same kind of thing as when you're not pregnant. You need to avoid the spicy foods, <laughs> the fried foods. Uh, you don't want to eat real fast. Mm -hmm. You could also eat smaller meals. And even though you're really tired when you're pregnant, mm -hmm. you don't want to eat and then go lie down because, of course, that's going to make the heartburn worse, too. 
gets out so hard. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's kind of like yes, I'm tired, you know. Yes, so, you do. You get tired when you're pregnant. And I'm sure you heard the old wives tell like heartburn means like a really you, you your baby has a full head of hair. Like yes, I don't know, they've that. actually had or it's going to be a boy. Yeah, kind of things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's also what I don't know how true that is. It's not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> so you heard that. So um, it's not really true. So if you don't have heartburn, it doesn't mean you're going to have a bald baby. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, uh, Miss Bush. Uh, Amanda asks, "Is there anything that can be done to prevent stretch marks?" Oh my, <laughs> stretch marks! I often get asked questions about this, um, but about ninety percent of all pregnant women will get stretch marks, okay. and they will occur either in the arms or around the stomach, even in the breast, mm -hmm. legs, or buttocks. And we always say there's a lot of creams out on the market that can mm -hmm. help you. Um, both prenatally and postnatally, but I always tell people don't be afraid of stretch marks because actually it's a badge of honor. Mm -hmm. It's saying, hey, I brought life onto this planet right. and we all get them. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you mentioned that because, you know, I think as women, we're already automatically, I think, self-conscious about how we look. So, you know, going through pregnancy, it's kind of tough sometimes, you know, you have to let yourself, one, gain weight, you know, all the time, all their life is like, no, I got to lose weight. So this is something where I like, know you're supposed to gain, you know, mm -hmm. 25, right. 35 pounds. You're like, ooh. And then, <laughs> and then the other thing with the stretch marks and stuff. So it's really good that, you know, your advice is more just pretty much embrace it. You know, it's Correct. pretty much most likely it's, it's going to be unavoidable. You're going to have it. So, mm -hmm. you know, just pretty much more of how to deal with the stretch marks, not necessarily how to get rid of them. Correct. You know, right. so. and they'll fade. Mm -hmm. They'll fade after you give birth. They'll always be there a little bit, but they <laughs> fade. Okay. <laughs> um, Jessica asks, which types of fitness activities are approved? Mm. Oh well, you're going to want to talk to your doctor okay. about that. Mm -hmm. Always, we refer back to your doctor, but a general guideline is you want to avoid those high impact kind mm -hmm. of exercises. Um, anything that is common to cause an injury, you want to avoid. Mm -hmm. But you can walk. You can uh, get on a stationary bike at the gym. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Swimming is also very safe. So uh, just just watch those things that can cause you an injury. Be careful with stretching too, that you don't do mm -hmm. it really fast. Don't go to your gym and do a yoga class, the kinds where they, they have you moving this position, that mm -hmm. position, so that you're twisting because you can injure yourself. Mm -hmm. When you're pregnant and your back hurts, the last thing you want to do is to get an injury in your back. Yeah. So, so uh, Th those are most of the things, but always talk to your doctor about it. It may be that if you were running before you were pregnant, mm -hmm. that you can still run. Okay. Um, that, that's a general guideline. If you were doing it before you were pregnant, you may be able to continue, but watch the high impact. Yeah, that's really important because I know some people may have seen or noticed that like some women who, especially who are naturally athletic, mm -hmm. and sometimes they right. just continue to do it. And so, so it's good that you mentioned that like, mm -hmm. well, for them, every pregnancy is different. And for them, you know, their doctors say it's probably okay because right. they've done it all the time. Mm -hmm. So like, um, I've heard like, if you've never worked out before and you just suddenly do it, nah, right. no, not, not, not really good. good. So um, <laughs> pretty much I have a doctor said like, pretty much work out like an old, old lady, <laughs> you know. Just do that. Just, you know, it's good, you know, um, but not go insane because, again, we're not trying to lose weight here. Right. So, but, really and you good. do need to exercise. Mm -hmm. That's right. the thing. They call it labor for a reason. Mm -hmm. right. It's hard work. Mm -hmm. And if you, uh, you're you tired in the first part of your pregnancy and maybe you're resting a lot, but if you do that for the whole pregnancy, mm -hmm. you're not going to be very fit and that labor can be more difficult to get through. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So work out, but just not, you know, no, like, uh, was it Shanti or <laughs> yes. <laughs> P90. Yeah, <laughs> no, we don't need to do that. <laughs> uh, Melissa asks, is it normal to wee all the time when pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> it is, <laughs> yes, and, and, and I, you know, that's another one of those things that's very common mm -hmm. and women really complain about. Mm -hmm. Your uterus is getting bigger, mm -hmm. and so uh, that's going to put pressure on your bladder. You also have all this increased blood flow that's going to that area of your mm -hmm. body, and so it is very normal to um, have to run to the bathroom a lot. Now, what I find is that some clients, uh, especially if they're at work or if they're, at, they're somewhere that they think it's difficult to get to mm -hmm. the bathroom, they avoid drinking, and that's mm -hmm. a big no-no. Mm -hmm. If you get dehydrated, that can actually make your labor start. You can get preterm labor. It's mm -hmm. really dangerous. Mm -hmm. I've had several clients in the past year 
that when they've had preterm labor and they've gone to the hospital, it was determined that was the cause, was they got dehydrated. So it's very important to go ahead and keep drinking. It's going to be the worst in the first trimester, mm -hmm. then it gets a lot better. At the very end of your pregnancy, when the baby drops and mm -hmm. you're getting about time to have that baby, then it's you're going to be running to the bathroom <laughs> a lot again. Uh, it's just one of those things that happens. It's a pregnancy thing. and. It'll be over. So basically, drink <laughs> water and live next to a toilet. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Heather asks, uh, why constipation? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, not, uh, not, not, not as one of, as fun a topic, but I think a lot of it has to do with the prenatal vitamins as well, because there's a lot of iron in them, mm -hmm, so that causes right. a lot of constipation. But there's yeah, that's true. And it's hormones. Of course, almost mm -hmm. everything we're going to blame on those pregnancy mm -hmm. hormones. It makes the intestines uh, sluggish mm -hmm. so that everything's not moving through quite as quickly. Yeah. Okay, so even if you're young and you've never had a problem with constipation, it may suddenly come up and it's not real fun. Yeah. And so it's the same kind of things that you would do for that that you would if you weren't pregnant. You're going to eat a high fiber diet, mm -hmm. okay? If, if your food comes from an animal, it has no fiber in it. Oh, okay. Okay, vegetables, fruits, the whole grains. And then we're going to go back to that drinking. You need to mm -hmm. make sure that you're drinking plenty of fluids and exercise. You can, you can be eating pretty well, mm -hmm. but if you sit all the time, then mm -hmm. that can really aggravate the constipation yeah. problem as well. Wow, that's really interesting. And I love how you bring that up. Exercise and water pretty much can help with a lot of stuff. A lot so. of things, yes. Um, I want to ask this one. This is actually my question. Um, <laughs> so, um, ah, I've noticed like, um, face swelling and then nose getting bigger and then you know feet you know swelling so what is that and why does that happen do you know or can you do anything about it i don't know <laughs> about the facial portions of it um you know things getting bigger but i can attest to the feet <laughs> portion because <laughs> i have had two children and each time i was pregnant my feet grew a half an inch and that is in the bone, so it does not retreat. Mm -hmm. You will probably go up a half size with mm -hmm. each of your pregnancies. Um, I believe the f pertaining to the feet, that's because of the weight and, mm -hmm. and being up and about. But do you have any other suggestions about why um, facial portions grow? Yes, well, there's fluid retention when you're pregnant, and you'll hear moms talk about all the congestion that they get in their face, and that's something that happens. It doesn't sound real nice, but you get all this <laughs> mm -hmm. thickened mucus mm -hmm. in your body when you're pregnant, and so um, that's why some women will say, my nose looks like it's it's swelling. There's this right. fluid, there's extra blood flow going mm -hmm. on, and this thickening, thickening of the mucus so that then maybe your nose looks a little bigger. Now, unlike the feet, where that's probably not going to go away and your shoe size is going to go up, uh, your face is going to go back. Your, your nose will go back to the way it was before. So not to worry about that. <laughs> okay. Well, um, we have way more questions and we're uh, done with the first half of the show and then we're going to come back and answer some more questions. I'm excited to get to that. Um, these are really good and interesting and really interesting. Like I love them. <laughs> um, so uh, be sure don't go too far. Okay. Cause we have some more questions to answer right here on Insight. Our commitment to the community is something that we believe in and act on every single day. It's a key part of our culture and who we are as a company. Cox donates millions of dollars in cash and in-kind services to support local nonprofit and civic organizations each year. We recognize that a healthy community is a growing community. Here's a look at just a few of the organizations we support right here in Northwest Florida. We're extremely proud of all these local partnerships. Together, we are working to make the Gulf Coast thrive. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Someone will be in need, in need of wisdom, in need of comfort, in need of a friend, a brother, a sister, a meal, 
We should use the time we have to be heroes and make a greater impact by strengthening our ties to others. Be someone's hero. Give, advocate, volunteer, and night away. And we're back here on Insight, and I'm your host, Valerie Bogar, and I'm joined with two women with Healthy Start Coalition, um, Ms. Ardell Bush, and um, we also have Ms. Sheena Baker. And they were asked, we were asking questions that, uh, that came in from our viewers, some really good questions. Um, and sadly, we didn't get through all the time to get through all the questions, but we have some more um, for the second half. And so I'm eager to get through these questions. Um, so let's go where we left off. And I think we're left off with uh, gum disease. And this question <laughs> was asked by uh, Nicole. And um, she said, is it true that gum disease can cause premature labor? Oh, short answer is yes. And the reason why is because a lot of women uh, get perinatal gingivitis mm -hmm. while they're pregnant which leads to more bacteria mm -hmm. within their mouth and the mouth uh, the bacteria can lead to an infection and the infections can cause pre preterm labor so we always encourage everybody to definitely visit your dentist at least once during your pregnancy mm -hmm. Also, you know, take care of your oral hygiene. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed when I was pregnant that um, when I flossed and whatnot, I, I bled a little more excessively mm -hmm. when I flossed. And that has to do from the hormones and mm -hmm. the swelling of your gums. So also, if you have any type of oral issues going on before you get pregnant, mm -hmm. you need to get it checked out right away because oh. they will only get worse during your pregnancy. Oh wow, so. uh, that's really important. I know some people like to avoid the dentist, but you know it's different. You know you're carrying a little one, so it's really important that you go ahead and take care of that. Absolutely, so, good that you mentioned that one. So that was a good question. Uh, Michelle asked, uh, "My emotions and mood swings are getting worse. Is this normal?" Yes, <laughs> and you know you see this all the time on TV and in movies. Mm -hmm. They'll show pregnant women. Um, they'll show women in labor and giving birth. And when they show those types of things, often it's not very accurate, <laughs> but whenever they show the women bursting into tears and being very emotional and possibly very difficult and irritable, that's actually really not far off. <laughs> that, that's pretty real. Mm -hmm. And there's just such a flux in hormones that uh, women find that they really can burst into tears very easily. They can argue a lot more with their loved ones. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it's normal. Really, we like to talk a lot of times to the people that are around the pregnant woman mm -hmm. just to say, hey, cut her some slack, let's be patient with her because it is very difficult with all those hormones running mm -hmm. around to be the normal self that you were before you were pregnant. Okay, yes. I I've had stories, I think the um, wackiest was um, deciding what to eat for uh, dinner. It was, mm -hmm. um, and it was serious. I don't know why, but it was like, I don't know if I want string beans, and I cried over it. It was weird. Yes. Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I want string beans. <laughs> and I, was, I couldn't explain it. Like, it was just weird. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I'm glad that you mentioned that. But it's important that you mentioned about loved ones and stuff, or if you have, um, especially parents that are moms that actually have children, you know, I'm sure that's added stress, you know, so it's good that you say that for the whole family to be patient with them, you know, mm -hmm. when he's pregnant, so that's really good. Yes. And we would really like to address, you know, post-pregnancy moods mm -hmm. because your hormones are adjusting after you have your baby. Mm -hmm. And it is very typical for a lot of women to have what we call the baby blues. Mm -hmm. And the baby blues can last up to 10 days after you have your baby because there's a lot of stuff going on. Mm -hmm. um, you're overwhelmed. There's a lot of irritability going on. Mm -hmm. But if your baby blues last longer than 10 days, you might have postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. um, we always encourage women that if your baby blues last longer than 10 days after your baby's birth, that you need to go visit your doctor mm -hmm. and get checked out. Mm -hmm. Because the most important thing for you to do as a new mother is to be bonding with your baby. Mm -hmm. And if you are having um, these types of uh, issues with postpartum depression, mm -hmm. your bonding's not gonna be going on as well either. So it's another thing for families to keep an eye out on, on the woman also. 
Oh, that's really good that you mentioned that because I think there was another one I saw in one of your pamphlets. It's uh, about shaking babies and stuff Correct. and then uh, prevention on that one. So I think that's part with Healthy Start too that mm -hmm. you talk about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, with some people, and even it happens even with not just the moms, but also other family members too, that it gets really impatient and, and stuff like that and how dangerous that is. And caregivers mm -hmm. and whatnot. It's yeah. just, you know, they always say with shaken baby syndrome, just put the baby down, mm -hmm. walk away, let the baby cry, mm -hmm. it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. But just, you know, breathe and uh, just, you know, relax. Mm -hmm. um, and then come back to the baby after you've calmed down. Right. And ask yeah. for help. Yes, ask, always. Ask for help from others when your baby's crying and crying. With that shaken baby, you know when it really happens the most is when that baby has colic. Mm -hmm. And so that, that can be eight weeks to um, three months is w about when we tend to see that. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a baby that's crying and crying, it's a very high-pitched screaming mm -hmm. cry that can be very difficult yeah. to handle. And so that's why we say get help. And like Ardell said, if, if everyone has held the baby and, and everyone's getting tired of holding the baby, <laughs> put the baby down. Okay. And yes, and um, call for other help from other family, but just after you've taken the breather, then you can go back to the baby because we want the baby safe. Even mm -hmm. just a little bit of shaking mm -hmm. can really harm that baby. We can have blindness or death. Mm -hmm. We can have learning disabilities later on um, in life so that you might not have even realized that something happened right then. Mm -hmm. But the baby's head is so heavy and mm -hmm. they don't have the muscles in their neck to support it that um, it's very easy to injure the baby with shaking. That's very important. I'm glad that you mentioned that with all the mm -hmm. motions that can come mm -hmm. and then and how to handle it and very important to ask for help and call your doctor and you know if you think especially yes. if it lasts, baby blues last more than 10 days. Thank you for mentioning that's <laughs> a really really important question. Um, we have another question from Kimberly. She said what is uh, Braxton Hicks contractions? Oh those are practice contractions <laughs> and I, I know pe women think well I don't want to have to have contractions before it's even time for me to yeah. go into labor but you do. Now, uh, they can start up in your second trimester even. Mm -hmm. Generally, that early, they're painless. You may feel your stomach, your whole abdomen just kind of harden. Believe it or not, it can feel like cement when you mm -hmm. touch it. And it, it, it can be this painless mm -hmm. feeling. Now, later, as you get closer to time to deliver, it can really start hurting. Mm -hmm. And clients will tell me different things. They'll say, well, it hurt a little bit. Or they will say, I thought I was in labor and went <laughs> to the hospital and found out it wasn't real. But Braxton Hicks, what that is, it's, it's your uterus. Your uterus is basically like a, almost a big muscle, mm -hmm. and it's practicing. Just the way you work out your muscles so mm -hmm. that your muscles build, that's what your uterus is doing. It's getting ready for that work of pushing out that baby wow. when you give birth. So when it practices, it's strengthening, it's working that muscle. And uh, it, like I said, it usually is not painful at, at the beginning. Now, one way that you can know that it is Braxton Hicks and not real labor is Braxton Hicks contractions. They don't come closer together. They don't get longer. They don't progressively start to hurt more. Okay. That's what real labor contractions okay. do. So you may be two weeks from your due date and you have a contraction and then 10 minutes later you have another one mm -hmm. and then seven minutes, but then it's 20 minutes. Those are practice contractions. Okay. That's not the real thing. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> well, wow, the body is amazing. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh my goodness, it yeah. practices. So um, I know some people say like uh, if that happens, you can just practice like you do your breathing or whatever. Since your body's right. practicing, you can also practice, you know, mentally mm -hmm. like, okay, this is like the real, you know, pretend like the real thing, Absolutely. keep yourself calm and stuff like that. So might as well. Right. You know, practice with your body. <laughs> exactly. And also uh, remember too to go drink some water because mm -hmm. sometimes if it's really hurting mm -hmm. or they are starting to get a little closer together and you're not at least 37 weeks pregnant, then that would be preterm labor. If okay. it's not just practice contractions, you always call your doctor in that case mm -hmm. and generally the doctor will say, go drink a couple of glasses of water, lie down on your left side and let's see if it goes away. And sometimes mm -hmm. it will. You are dehydrated. And that's why you were getting those contractions. Got that is like the next question that also says with water. So <laughs> just let everybody who's watching just get that in mind. Just most likely water will actually save you. <laughs> All right, we have this one from Christina. Uh, she said, uh, what are the key advantages to signing up for childbirth classes? Ms. Bush, do you know like? Well, you know, childbirth classes are coaching and they're gonna give you mm -hmm. all kinds of great information about what to expect during the process. Mm -hmm. um, all of our labor and delivery hospitals here in both Okaloosa and Walton counties 
offer classes. Mm -hmm. Some of them cost a little bit of money, but our care coordinators are fantastic care coordinators. <laughs> they are like your own personal coach. They have a lot of great information. So I'm going to let Gina um, tell you what they do when they come out and, mm -hmm. and help you as their personal coach. Yeah, the childbirth education is really important. Most women are really frightened about uh, giving birth, especially if it's your first time mm -hmm. to give birth. And so it's really important that you know what to expect, that you know what those stages of labor are. Well, first of all, just that you know what the signs of labor. Am I going into labor? Am I not? And then uh, what what are these stages? How will mm -hmm. I know that I'm getting close to time to actually push? You know, is right. something that somebody will ask. Also, methods of pain relief. There's natural methods. Mm -hmm. we, so we will teach about natural um, childbirth mm -hmm. and ways to manage the pain. We will also teach you about uh, epidural childbirth, what mm -hmm. to expect with that. Mm -hmm. The pushing, what is it like afterwards after you have the baby as far as how much am I gonna bleed or mm -hmm. how do I take care of myself when I've had this vaginal birth or maybe you had a C-section. Mm -hmm. What do I expect for, with that? Childbirth doesn't always go the way that you plan. Yes. <laughs> and it, it doesn't. And so it's good to know this is ha different things that can happen with childbirth. Mm -hmm. Here are different interventions that may be necessary. Mm -hmm. If you have difficulty pushing out the baby, maybe forceps or a vacuum extraction may be necessary, or mm -hmm. maybe we have that C section. So the more informed a mother is, the less nervous she is and she's better able to cope when the time, wow. when the big day actually comes. Excellent. Well, we actually have time for, I think, just one more question. We didn't get through okay. all of them. And then uh, I'm gonna ask uh, this last one, and what are the benefits of breastfeeding? Oh, there are so <laughs> many benefits of breastfeeding. And you know, the American Academy of Pediatrics mm -hmm. recommends exclusive breastfeeding for six months and then breastfeeding at least for a year. Mm -hmm. And so there are many benefits to breastfeeding, um, both for mom and for baby. Now with the baby, it's important to remember that breast milk, it's a natural food for the baby. Mm -hmm. And so what that means is that it's going to pass through your baby's digestive system more easily. So we have uh, less constipation, less diarrhea, less spitting up mm -hmm. when a baby is breastfed. Also babies who, um, who are breastfeeding have fewer respiratory infections, fewer earaches. Um, now with mom, one thing to remember is that it helps you to lose weight because you can burn up to 500 Yay! calories yes, <laughs> when you're breastfeeding. Um, also, your risk of breast and ovarian cancer um, goes down if mm -hmm. you breastfed a baby. Yeah. It's less expensive. Mm -hmm. Formula is very, very expensive. But another big thing that uh, I hear most moms talk about is the bonding experience mm -hmm. that you have whenever you breastfeed your baby. Mm -hmm. I've heard one mom describe it as a spiritual experience. Yeah. When she gave birth to that baby, and now this baby's not inside of her anymore, mm -hmm. and yet she feels this real connectedness mm -hmm. when she is able to breastfeed her baby. Yeah. She's the only one who could do it. Dad can't do it. Dad can be involved in a lot of other ways <laughs> with changing the diaper and bringing right. baby to mom so that mm -hmm. she can breastfeed and give the baby back so that mom can go right back to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really wonderful. That's really awesome. Lo lots of benefits with the breastfeeding. Thank you so much, ladies, for being on the show. And thank yeah. you, viewers, for sending in your questions. These were great. And if you have more questions, you can go ahead and um, go ahead and contact Healthy Start. All right, with more questions than that. And thank you for watching us here on Insight.